Welcome again to Fibromyalgia and Chronic Fatigue Update. Today we're focusing on really what is a very exciting and a very practical topic for people who suffer from fibromyalgia. The topic is medical marijuana as applied to fibromyalgia. We're not just talking about any painful condition, we're talking about specifically applying this to the condition of fibromyalgia patients. Our expert today is Dr. Geneva Lipton. Dr. Lipton is one of the truly great physician leaders in fibromyalgia treatment. She has considerable experience with her patients who are taking medical marijuana, many of whom are doing extremely well with it, others are not. We're going to talk about who should be taking it, what are the side effects, who shouldn't be taking it. We're going to have segments in two parts. First part is going to be, does, fiber, does medical marijuana really work for fibromyalgia? And the second is going to be, if you're going to take it, how to take it. I should add that Dr. Lipton was associate professor at the Oregon Health and Science University. She's now medical director of the teaching clinic at Legacy Good Samaritan Hospital in Portland, Oregon. She teaches resident physicians how to treat fibromyalgia. She's also the author of a book for patients, Figuring Out Fibromyalgia, Current Science, and the Most Effective Treatments. So, Geneva, does medical marijuana really work? For fibromyalgia, yes, it does for most people. But just like any medicine, it doesn't help everyone. Some medicines uh, will be great for one person and not for another. I will say that out of my fibromyalgia patients, many of them find uh, medical marijuana really helpful. As doctors, though, we always want to look at studies. We want evidence. We want data. And there actually hasn't been a single study looking at medical marijuana for fibromyalgia. There have been many studies looking at medical marijuana for other painful conditions, uh, including nerve damage from diabetes, uh, muscle spasms from multiple sclerosis, and in those studies, it has medical marijuana has been found to be helpful. So we can kind of extrapolate that from that, it would be helpful for fibromyalgia. There's also been some studies looking at prescription THC, which is uh, prescription medications uh, that take the active ingredient from the marijuana plant, which is THC and um, make it into a prescription. There's two drug companies that have done that. And there's been two small studies looking at fibromyalgia uh, with prescription THC, and both found it to be very helpful for pain and for improved sleep. And as you know, those are big issues with fibromyalgia patients. Absolutely. However, yes. prescription That's... THC has a lot of side effects. Yes. Patients in these studies describe dry mouth, dizziness, poor balance, and nausea. So it's thought that when you isolate and just use THC without the other components of the marijuana plant, you end up with a lot more side effects. Yeah, I think that's kind of my experience. Uh, we've not had great success with the formal medicines, but I do have a fair number of patients who have, we've had medical marijuana now in New Jersey, and a large majority of them have done well. And of course, some others haven't done well. Next big question though, is it safe? Uh, they talk about marijuana as a gateway drug. Uh, there, we have some patients who are on narcotic, uh, some people who have schizophrenia. Uh, one, is it safe? And two, then what are the side effects? Very good question. And as a doctor, I'm always worried first, you know, first do no harm. So the safety of marijuana is pretty well established. It's thought to have low toxicity. It does not affect the respiratory or breathing centers of the brain. So unlike opiate-based pain medications, which can cause uh, decreased breathing, even leading to death and overdose, marijuana does not cause that. So it's not thought to be something that you can overdose on. Um, however, as far as safety, we do know that smoking anything is unhealthy for the lungs. So definitely I recommend people use other routes um, when they're using it for medicinal purposes, and we'll talk a lot more about that in the next segment. Uh, there are some other safety issues um, as far as medical marijuana, though, because when you combine it with any other mind-altering substance, such as alcohol or opiates, it has an additive effect so that you can get a lot more sedated and a lot more um, possibly uh, affecting your ability to kind of think clearly, drive a, drive a vehicle, 
Um, so I definitely recommend people do not combine medical marijuana with alcohol or with opiates. And I also recommend people don't drive after using medical marijuana because if you were pulled over, you could get a DUI if you had marijuana in your system, even though it's for a medicinal purpose. Okay, so we, we know there are certain groups of people who probably shouldn't be taking medical marijuana. I would imagine it's people who have a drug abuse history. Uh, we, we discussed it earlier, uh, people who are taking opiates. Uh, people who probably have psychotic disorders probably should not. Yes. And are there any other groups who absolutely should not? There's, there's no other groups that absolutely should not. There is a caveat that uh, mar marijuana can decrease blood pressure and can increase heart rate. So people that have severe heart disease, particularly irregular heart rhythms like atrial fibrillation or significant angina, which is where you have decreased blood flow to the heart, those people really should uh, be cautious and speak with their physician prior to trying medical marijuana. Okay. Now, side effects. You hear about the people so-called getting the munchies, they, 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 they're going to overeat, they're going to get fat. Other people are super sedated and they can't function throughout the day. Uh, tell us about the side effects, how common are they and is there anything they can do to avoid them? So those side effects that you mentioned uh, are not that common when you're using it for medicinal purposes. Um, because you're using much lower doses than when you're using it for kind of the recreational high. Uh, the key is to try and find the right strain of marijuana that limits those side effects. So marijuana has about 200 different compounds in it. Uh, THC is the biggest one that, that kind of we talk about. That's the one that gives you the psychoactive, the high feeling. Um, but some of the other compounds in marijuana actually act to decrease those side effects. There's one called CBD or cannabidiol. And if you get a strain that has a balanced amount of THC and CBD or cannabidiol, it can limit those side effects of munchies or sedation. So one of the things that the people watching may or may not realize is that in the what well, some odd 20 states where medical marijuana is legal, typically there are counselors at the dispensing clinics that can help guide you as to which strain to be using and how much to be using, how often to be using it. Is that the case? Yes, exactly. Although it does vary from state to state. In California, where California legalized medical marijuana in 1996, so they have a very established uh, dispensary system. They have some very, very knowledgeable uh, dispensary owners and counselors. Uh, other states that are newer, like New Jersey, you know, it's uh, there's not quite as much experience as far as um, in the dispensaries. So what I recommend is that people definitely um, ask around, talk to other patients that might be using medical marijuana. And there's also a good website called leafly.com, which is basically a Yelp of marijuana. So you say leafly, that is L-E-A-F-L-Y? Yes. L-E-A-F-L-Y dot com. They have reviews on different strains of medical marijuana um, and also on different dispensaries. So if you live in a state where it is legal, um, you can look at all the dispensaries close to you and see which ones get are well reviewed. And then nationally, the some some there's about 500 different strains of marijuana used for medicinal purposes. <laughs> okay. They are um, all reviewed, so it's it's a really useful and informative website. Right. Now this then begs the next question: uh, Some people are going to be watching, and they're not in states where it's legal. Obviously, it is illegal, uh, but the we had a discussion the other day, which is uh, you're really quite opposed to people going out in the street corner and buying the marijuana and then using it for the medicinal purposes. Why is that? Because you have no idea what you're getting. You don't have any way to know what is in it. And unfortunately, sometimes the marijuana that is sold on the street corner is laced with other psychoactive substances that can give you a very negative or even dangerous experience. Yeah, we, we discussed, uh, you know, I, I spent a lot of time looking at nutrition, looking at the health food industry, and one of the most common things they can do is if they, for instance, they want a uh, sexual potency pill, they say it's an herb, it's a natural product, and then they slip some Viagra in there. Right. And people will say, wow, this really works. And in fact, they right. can sell it at a price so that they can buy the wholesale cheap Viagra, put it in, and I guess you have adulterated, certainly in the illegal market of drugs, very often to try and increase the uh, so-called potency. 
Absolutely. And things can be laced with really toxic things like PCP, which can give people horrible experiences. So I definitely recommend avoiding that at all costs. Yeah. Okay. So um, we've discussed the general medical marijuana. In the next segment, we're going to go and discuss the specifics of how people might best take it safely and effectively. Are there any other general thoughts that you have at this time before we go on to segment two? The one other thought that I would have is if, if people are interested in knowing what the status of legality is in their state, um, there's a good website called Marijuana Policy Project. It's mpp.org, and it, you can look up by state what, this, what the laws are in your state, how much marijuana you're allowed to possess, and you can look and see if there's any upcoming legislation so you can make sure if you are interested um, in voting on whether it's legal in your state. Right. So right now we're talking about it's legal in 20 states and if California is included that's probably you know at least half the country we're talking yeah. about and uh, so many of you will be watching uh, will have the opportunity to go I guess in New Jersey only a few doctors are involved and you have to go to a doctor that's been registered with the program I take it in other states it's much easier to get than in New Jersey yeah, in Oregon, any doctor can write, uh, it's basically a statement that you sign saying that I believe this patient has a condition that could be benefited from medical marijuana. Um, and a lot of doctors in Oregon feel really comfortable with it. Okay, well, we're going to finish this segment. And uh, at the end, we're going to have some slides where people can find out what uh, Dr. Lipton's book is, where people can uh, find out the, uh, the leafly.com and also how they can click from this segment to segment two, which we will be recording shortly. Thank you, Dr. Lipton. I appreciate your time. My pleasure.